Welcome, everyone, and thank you for listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined again by Ricky Baez on this Friday afternoon. It's not afternoon yet. It's actually morning, so that's uh, strike number one, Ricky. But but how are you doing? Well, I was doing great thinking my Friday was already over, but you had to dial – you had to daylight savings times me back. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> you were ready it. to grab a drink, and I, I just ripped it out of your hands. <laughs> you did, man. Thanks. You could get anywhere. <laughs> awesome. So I'm excited but, for this topic today. This this topic is one that is 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 interesting because a lot of people uh, have strong opinions on whether companies should look at social media accounts, should consider what people do in their personal lives when they're not on the clock, so to speak. And I, I think there's good arguments to be made on both sides. So let's just get right into it. Let, let's start at a high level and say, what do you think? What do, should companies look at? their prospective employees' social accounts. So let me tell you, I'll tell you what, what I do and how careful I have to be from an HR perspective on how we do this. Do I look, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do, right? Because here's the thing, when I interview somebody, Pete, I'm not just looking for an employee. I mean, although at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for, Barb, but you are looking to open up your checkbook and dish out quite a bit of money in exchange for a talent. But at the same time, that talent has to mess with your team. So from an HR human perspective, you have to know who you're bringing onto your team. So the way I look at it is if, um, if you leave your social media out there in the open for anybody to look from a simple search, I'm gonna do it, man. <laughs> I am, right? Um, I guess from, it, it, so from going down that route, from an HR perspective, I start thinking I got to be careful too because I don't want to make a decision on whether to or not hire somebody based on something that's illegal, which you can get that si into that situation by going on social media. So it's one of those balancing acts you have to do to make sure you're doing the right thing legally and you do what's best for your organization. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think yeah, there's not a one size fits all answer to, to this. I, I think even among the different social outlets, there's it's worth considering these things individually. So let's let's do that a little bit and start with the one that by default is I consider it a social media account, but most I think some people would would consider it a little bit differently, and that's LinkedIn yeah. because it's intended for business, and and so almost by definition, it's it's not necessarily social, although it's blended together. Right, I think LinkedIn. It exists it, well. They exist to make money, which we know, um, since they charge I mean. an arm and a leg uh, for for uh, posting ads on on their site. But they, the purpose of the site is to almost mix business and pleasure to some degree. And um, I think with that one in particular, employees need to consider that to be a resume of sorts that they're posting yeah. publicly. So. On that one, I, I always find it very strange when people decide to uh, let their their personal feelings out <laughs> in some extreme cases or their political thoughts where I look at LinkedIn and think there's really no place for that. Um, it's only going to do more harm than good if you end up um, offending people unnecessarily. So yeah. that one in particular to me is more about judgment than anything else. And and so I, I would say if, if someone is going off the rails on LinkedIn and, and, and getting into political arguments and, and taking strong stands that have no real purpose in the workplace, I think that's a, a potential red flag for employers to see. It would be a red flag on both sides though, Pete, right? Because here's, here's my thing, I'm with you. I'm seeing a lot of people on LinkedIn specifically that yeah, they treat it as a, a canvas for their political ideology, for their religious identification, which again, that's I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent, but if you put that out there as a candidate, you are you're you're narrowing who your audience is when you start looking for a job. Now that's from the candidate's perspective. From the employer's perspective, we gotta be careful, right? Because if we see somebody who's really great for your team. But then you see on LinkedIn that they're really leaning one way politically or religiously on LinkedIn. When we would say, God, I don't want that. I don't want to bring that kind of angst into the organization. And you make a decision because of that. 
that can land you in legal trouble because in the eyes of the law, that means you made a decision based on the political and or religious affiliation, and that's illegal in the Title Seven. Well, it's we're living well, in strange no, religious times. Piece, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's strange times, needless to say. And I remember, gosh, 20 years ago now, when I was at Tech Data Corporation, there was um, some sort of political event going on, and I don't know if it was just a local issue, if it was national. I can't I can't recall the circumstances, but I remember the CEO of the company, this is a large public company, sent a, an email to all the employees with his opinion and, and, and basically implying or, or strongly suggesting, I don't remember the wording, what our opinion should be on this issue. Oh. And, I, and I remember thinking that it was an inappropriate thing to do it, yeah. it, as an employee. I did not need to know his opinion on this issue. It wasn't something that affected our workplace and I almost felt like I said it, inappropriate not not in a, a way that, that yeah you know, I deleted the email and moved on right unlike today where people you know build they take a life stance around things that they don't like saying but I remember thinking it was just unnecessary to inject that into uh, is, is the workplace and to you know suggest that employees should agree with an opinion on a political issue and now fast forward today here in Florida, everyone, you know, you'd have to be you know, blind and deaf and just not paying attention at all to um, to not see what Disney's done recently yeah. with a bill that's happening here that people are taking uh, sides on. They're they're coming up with with you know, names for the bill that may or may not be relevant to what it is, and the the CEO of Disney decided to you know, approach the governor of the of, of the state about about this and I I look at that and think well I mean that's that's a business decision right yeah. um but I I continue to find it an odd one 20 years later although it's becoming very prevalent in in our world today it is in in um I know what situation you're you're talking about because I'm following that very closely and at first, I'm thinking, why did the CEO step into to why is he getting involved? And I quickly found out why a lot of his employees, he's getting pressure from his employees, a large, a lot of uh, uh, of his employees um, um, are putting pressure on the CEO. So the CEO kind of had to act from my perspective. I'm thinking, look, they're a business. Let them run the business how they want it. Right. It, it, it's I'm a big believer in that. If people don't like to work for that for that organization because of their stance, then then let the market choose, let the market decide. But to get involved politically, to me, it's just it's just nobody wins there, man. Well, I, I what I find strange about it is I you know, as a president of a company, I don't want to ostracize my employees on either side of an issue, yep. regardless of how I feel about it. And like everyone, I, I have certain strong feelings on issues, but I don't expect my employees to agree with those issues, especially, um, or agree with my opinion, especially where it's not relevant. And that's where, what I scratch my head over. And I'm, I'm, I have a very um, you know, strong line that I've drawn there to say, I, I'm not gonna weigh in on those things if, yeah. if it's not relevant to the business. And I, you know, our employees can, they can have whatever opinions they, they want provided they don't um, you know, affect the business because they intrude too much yeah. Yeah, yeah. on the business or, 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 or make us look bad publicly. But I do find it very strange that companies are going out of their way to take a, a, a stance on on certain things. And in this case of Disney, yes, there, there's there's a, it seems to be a large number of vocal employees encouraging them to take a stand. But what about the ones who don't agree? Are, are they <laughs> less important? Are they less valuable to the organization? And um, I, I think it just is is just unnecessary. And it's a little off topic for what we're talking about, but it is a time. It's happening right That's now. That's us, man. It, right? <laughs> we always <Yeah>. do this. <laughs> so, so it's interesting for us to take uh, you know, the uh, the view that employees shouldn't share those things. When employers are, are blazing the trail, you know, doing the polar opposite. So I, I it's a, it's a, it, it, it's a tough, it's a tough place to operate right now. So, I, I, am on the fence on that, right? Because if um, I, I, I believe that the, the, the president, the leader of an organization, if they're going to be, uh, showing, leading the way, and they want to be able to show their political affiliation, religious, whatever it is. 
go ahead and show it. But when other people show the opposite of it, right, something completely different, you should be okay with it as well, right? Be, 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 because if you, if you op- like in that email, if you open up and say, here's what I think about it, next thing you know, I get fired because of it. You're just opening yourself up to unnecessary legal issues, right? So if you're going to go that route, exactly how you said, let other people do it so far as that it doesn't affect the business because of what you're saying. And that's what, Pete, that's what people are doing on LinkedIn, man. LinkedIn quickly is becoming the Facebook uh, of of the uh, of the uh, uh, business world when it comes to social media, there's not only political affiliation and religious stuff. I'm seeing some questionable pictures on there as well. I don't know if you've well, seen them. <laughs> well, it, it's it's a people are free to do what they want, mm-hmm. but your your actions have consequences. That's right, and and that's the part that has to be acknowledged in in this. Go, go nuts, right? Go post whatever, whatever you choose, but understand you will be judged for it. And it's a weird thing to me as well for people to um, think that they shouldn't be judged. You're always going to be judged (laughs) by your actions and words. And so you just have to understand that regardless of whether you think you should be, you will be. And it, it may be sub subconscious in some cases, it certainly won't be you know, known to you in some cases, but make no mistake, it, it's happening. And so whether it's a company taking a stand on, on an issue or an individual deciding to um, you know, post strong opinions you know, publicly on a forum like LinkedIn, you know, just, just it, it's, being, it's being read and it's being um, considered and people will treat you accordingly. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's all. That's that's all it is. So just know what you're what you're doing, and that and that you know your your actions do have ramifications. So that said, from an employer's perspective, or or, or a recruiting manager's perspective, or, or recruiter for that matter, when you're interviewing somebody and you find that that person man is the best fit for the organization, right? And as a recruiter, we spend quite a bit of time on LinkedIn. We spend quite a bit of time on social media because that's what we do to find the best and brightest candidates. But then you run into, after you made the offer, right, the person hasn't started yet, you run into a video of that they posted on LinkedIn showing how they used to no call, no show for the previous organization, how they used to steal from the previous organization. And obviously, they didn't put the videos on LinkedIn, but it's a TikTok that they did that they shared on LinkedIn. So it's from a recruiting manager's perspective, what do you do with that information? We well, can't ignore it. Yep. Right. Agreed. You can't unring that bell. Uh, so I think as much as anything, it's a matter of judgment. It, well, now you just, you mentioned something that's pretty extreme, you know, stealing from your previous employer, right? That, that's a legal issue. Yeah. That is something that <laughs> yeah. is, 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 is much different than just sharing an opinion on something. So yeah. I, I would, I would separate those, but, and I think everyone else would too, yep. right? But let's just keep it to sharing something that's um, questionable on there. And I look at it as much as anything as, as, as judgment calls. And judge, can I trust that person's judgment? And if, they, if they're representing themselves poorly now, why should I expect them to change if they're uh, an employee of, of my organization? And the answer is I shouldn't. So that's how I look at, at those sort of postings is, that you referenced is, is that, you know, you can do it, but you know, if, if, if it's gonna, if, <laughs> if, if, if it's on LinkedIn and your and your, it, your name is attached to the business, the business has to, you know, at some point you know, get involved in, in that and There's consider whether you're the type of employee that's best represents that brand. And there has been a lot of, um, of videos in the past couple of years that has come out, what people do on their own time, and that video goes viral, right? One person's the victim, one person's the aggressor. Next thing you know, uh, people get fired, right? Because of nothing they did at work, only something that went viral on social media. Now, organizations need to be careful with it, right? Because organizations should ignore when they see things like that happening on social media, whether it's is, is a political conversation or a religious one where somebody takes a stance against the other, but let's say if you're caught on video doing some crazy things to somebody because of your political stance on social media and the organization 
Now, I'm not an attorney. Neither are you. I'm, I don't know. Are you an undercover attorney, Pete? I don't I'm know not, if you're doing no. that. Okay, got it. All right. Just, I don't know. <laughs> All right. You, you never know these days. Um, so we're not attorneys. So my take on it is, though, that legally you should not be able to take any action unless the organization is easy to connect those person's actions to you as the organization. And now because of that, it brings your organization into a bad life from a brand new perspective, then you can take action. But even then, you got to be careful and I highly encourage you to get an attorney, uh, which Pete and I are not, just to make sure <laughs> to get an attorney to help you in that process, right? But you're right, it's, it's, it's really easy to fall into that, into that trap. When you see somebody who you don't align with and then you're like, ooh, they're not gonna mesh well with this team. Be careful, right? Because the 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 reason you're selecting religious uh, 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 party that is highly protected under Title Seven of the Civil Rights Act, and they could come back to uh, after you. So I say do it, but proceed with caution and be careful what actions you take because of it. Well, I'm going to give it a bit of a different answer on that. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm going to say as advice, don't do it because there's no upside. Okay. Right? You know, the, as an employee, there's no upside. I, I, no one's asking if Disney doesn't need my advice either, but I would, uh, Got it. I would give them the same advice as an organization to say, mm, you know, maybe, maybe stay in your lane a little bit, right, <laughs> with this stuff, or at least consider your, the you know, the opposite opinion when you when you do anything publicly, and I, and that would be um, a guideline that I try to follow is that just because it's my opinion. And, and maybe the opinion of a lot of people that, that I'm surrounded by, it doesn't mean it's the right opinion for yeah. others. It doesn't mean it needs to be shared by others. And if there's not a clear upside to it, but clear downside, then maybe just keep it to yourself, right? I mean, not, not, you know, not every thought in your head has to be shared publicly. Yeah. And and just because you can do it, again, does it doesn't mean you should. So... When it comes to, and I'm not even thinking about uh, in terms of you know, people posting on LinkedIn their, their political opinions. Now, I just think that's weird because yeah. more, more than anything else, because it's LinkedIn. Like it's it's you keep politics away from. Like how does everyone not know that? I don't <laughs> like, understand. That's part of my my um, what makes me incredulous about this is who they decided that's a good idea in the first <laughs> place to to go to to blend those things. Yeah, we were all together, or a lot of us locally with Four Corner were together yesterday in the office. And I guarantee if we went down the line and asked opinions on politics, religion, in, anything that um, you know, is, is really just generally, I thought, accepted as a bad idea to talk about in the office, we're gonna, we're gonna see every opinion you know, on, the, on the spectrum out there, and that's okay. Yep. It, it, that, you know, that's okay, and I, I think there's benefit to that. I think having diversity uh, of, of opinions makes an organization stronger yep. because without those other perspectives, you're, you're going to be limited. And so, but, but to unnecessarily express it, uh, you know, in, in a, in a business setting on LinkedIn, is just going to be limiting for you. What's as the goal? Individual. What's the goal of putting that out there? Right? Because well, if I, LinkedIn, <laughs> to me, it's, I'm with you on that. I am. And, and here's what gets me, Pete, because somebody puts it on there. And I'm like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to go down this rabbit hole. And then you look at the comments, 2,000 comments, people engaging it. And I'm like, it's oh, <laughs> yeah. not giving credibility. <laughs> don't well, give it credibility at all. Just let it ride. But I don't see any upside to it. I'm with you. Not all attention is good attention. Yeah. I think yeah. that's where it gets lost is that you know, these social accounts in many ways, and in addition to not being attorneys, we're not psychiatrists either, but or psychologist. Yeah, yourself. <laughs> I mean, you, may, you, may, you may play one on TV, but yeah. in, or feel like that often. I um, feel like that a lot. But it's it's whatever's going on that that that, that you know, in someone's mind that you know, makes them crave those likes, crave share, crave yeah. the shares and, and the comments. And, and, and you know, it's a it's a weird thing that's happened with with social media, um, but. Just because it's attention doesn't mean it's a good thing you know, for, for you as an individual. So my recommendation, at least, is keep it, you know, keep it business. Keep it professional on LinkedIn. Yep. Um, don't enter into areas that, um, you know, that are going to have some 
portion, even if it's a small portion of of, uh, of the population on there, you know, think less of you and, and it's yeah. unnecessary. Now, should employers take those things and make, um, you know, hiring decisions or, or you know, consider terminating someone because of it? No, but, but on the other hand, subconsciously it's going to happen right yeah. that, that is what we know to be definitively true so let's talk about the other social media aspects so let's say facebook let's say tiktok because tiktok has been growing by leaps and bounds uh, and you know it's uh i don't know about you but it's uh i find myself not watching tv or cable anymore because i get a lot of my entertainment from tiktok it's one of those things that you're like Ah, let me hop on there for two minutes and then three hours later, oh my God, I got to go to bed, <laughs> right? Because you see some really interesting things. I don't know if this has happened to you, but uh, previous life, um, um, it was it, it, it wasn't TikTok back then. It was, um, oh my goodness, Reels from Instagram that was popular. And I'm looking through and I see one of my employees, you know, doing some questionable stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that's illegal, right? <laughs> So what do you do with that information? Now, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, right? I couldn't test that that was the stuff that this employee was doing, but I felt a duty to have a conversation with that employment. Look, I wasn't looking for this. This came across my feed. I'm here to let you know I saw this. I'm not going to take any action on it, but I'm just merely letting you know this is your time. I completely get it. Be careful what you put on there. Because if I passively found it, somebody else can passively found it as well. And as soon as they attach where you work for, then we're going to have a different conversation about that. Well, so my, my rule that I follow as, as a manager of, of you know, people and having employees as the owner of a company, I don't follow anyone on their personal accounts. Unless, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> unless they follow me first. You know, oh, yeah? If they, okay. they, if they want to open that door fine but i've it's a, it's a hard and fast rule for me not to infringe um on you know someone's social life unless they they open the door first and and even then i look at it differently that's why i wanted to talk about linkedin first because i put that in its own category yeah that is a business tool um and keep it that way when it comes to the social tools i i, I think if an employee wants to 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 um to blend those things together then then so be it right to your point they should know that there's potential downside yeah. to it or risk. <laughs> yeah. But when we're ta what we're talking about on uh, today in terms of using those accounts um, in the recruiting process, now that's 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 a little different because yeah. now employers are going, you know, potentially recruiters are going to look at these accounts without being asked to do it, right. um, without being invited in. And so, if you are someone who feels overwhelmingly compelled to share things that uh, some that, that a prospective employer may be considered negative, by all means, keep your account private. I mean, there that's the thing. Again, so much of it to me, legal things are legal things, right? If you're, if you're committing you know, crimes and, and acts of violence or, you know, whatever that, that would be, be you know, considered illegal under, under any, um, under you know, under any circumstance, you, you, good luck if you're sharing that stuff <laughs> on social media or anywhere. I mean, that's just foolish. But if it comes to judgment, and that's where I I, I go back to again, that's what I'm you know, concerned is you know for individuals that if you are out um, you know doing something that is legal, but um, but generally considered something that is um, you know showing poor character yeah. or um, that would just be embarrassing to an organization, as, as you referenced earlier. You know, then, then you're gonna you're gonna be looked over for opportunities. They're gonna be passed over for things, and 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 rightfully so, because companies are <laughs> want to understand who they're hiring beyond just the resume. You may have you know, all the skills and experience and background, but if you're if you're you're a foolish individual and you're willing to show the world how foolish, then yeah. that, that speaks to your character in a pretty significant way. 
And, you know, Pete, I, I really feel bad for the people who are up and coming these days because they have a much harder time than you and I did coming up in, in our careers, right? Because, look, we were young once, and we've partied. We've done some things back in the day, but there's no digital evidence of it, <laughs> right? Are we saying should you not document things? No, we're not saying that. But to your point, if me as a, as a recruiting authority – and I'm looking for you to come to my organization. And now I see that you either don't know or don't care to separate your personal stuff from your business stuff on LinkedIn. I'm going to have some questions. I'm going to have because exactly how you said, if you if you don't know, you don't care to put that out there. What else are you going to be careless with with my organization, especially if I have to give you an NDA? or some kind of a contract to sign to keep confidentiality. I have to worry about that now. But yeah, and well, you, you, you mentioned something that I think is worthy of, of calling out and, and exploring a little bit is this idea that companies or on social media in general, you know, in our cancel culture that, that, that has come about over the past couple of years, this desire to go back in time and look at what <laughs> you know, adults yeah. did as children <laughs> and and then punish them years later, uh, 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 you know, which is bizarre to me. To, like you said, we didn't have that you know, burden of, of being filmed you know, anywhere at any time. Uh, maybe our actions would have been different had we known that risk existed. But um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I don't know anyone who, who would be willing to have their entire – life all their thoughts all their opinions they had at a previous stage of of their of their life at a, at a younger age um yeah they, they change they evolve and we mature and grow and that that is that's just life and that, that's what being a person is all about and so to to drag up old things is bizarre to me and i i don't have much respect for people who who do that and and punish you know, people who clearly have grown out of, of doing yeah. you know, stupid well, things. For or... you, it, it, you, you're saying it's bizarre. I'm saying it infuriates me. It infuriates me because we're because people are going to punish other people for something they said or did 20 years ago. So are you celebrating that they've never changed? We're human beings. We grow and evolve. The person you are today should not be the same person you were 10 years ago. It shouldn't be right. You should evolve with time, evolve with change, and and whatever um, a trials and tribulations you've been through should shape you into a different person you are today than what you were ten years ago. So to be punished for something you did or say twenty, thirty years ago, I I, I think it's infuriating because now um, I think that's going to create an environment where people are going to be even more fake on social media, and we're never get really going to get to see the real person. Now, if you're a, somebody who wants to explore all these things and you want to say all crazy kinds of things, yeah, don't hit record. <laughs> don't hit upload, <laughs> right? It will come back and bite you. It's, look, it's going to be a great presidential campaign in 20 years because all these kids that are in school or, 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 or have been out of school for 10 years now, so a lot of things are going to come up on Facebook and LinkedIn from right now that's going to affect them in the presidential campaign 20 years from now. That's right. We'll, we'll just, you know, the, the, uh, the campaigns will just be the, the, uh, the, the, their, their, their history, media their, their social media, history. their whole life. And then we just decide how much we like someone based on that. I mean, the, we're not far from that. <laughs> no, we're no, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's bizarre. It, and especially since these things are used selectively. Um, but that's yeah. a whole different, that's a whole different path to go down. <laughs> um, growth, learning, evolving, in most cases comes from adversity or making a mistake Absolutely. to learn from. And we should celebrate those things. We should celebrate people not being who they were in the past, being better today than they were in, in a former um, you know, place in their life, not admonish them for it. And Correct. so we're, we're on the same page with that. Now, if someone chooses to continue to leave those things online, so I, I you know, would separate this too. If if someone who screen um, you know, captured something from years ago or, or kept a recording that the person had deleted and then brings that up against them, that's really what we've been talking about for the past few minutes. But if someone continues to share things from their past online or leave it up there, 
Well, then, you know, once again, you're showing bad judgment. Yep. It, it, you know, so if you're going to evolve, actually evolve. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't True. Don't leave your stupidity <laughs> uh, uh, out there for the world to see. So advice for candidates. Here's my advice for candidates out there who are trying to find a job, which shouldn't be too hard these days. There's a really good market out there right now for you guys. It's a, it's a great market for people looking for a job, and it's a great market for people looking to sell a house. Jump on it. Um, so here's, here's what I say before you go out and interview, before you even apply, sanitize your social media accounts, sanitize your LinkedIn, make sure your LinkedIn is, 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 is properly written. You got stuff in there that should be in there. If you got Facebook, TikTok, all, all those other things, and you, you know, you've, you've digitally preserved questionable behavior, <laughs> lock that down, keep it to your internal network. You don't want to give a recruiter any ammo to go one way or the other on the desirable outcome you want in that hiring process. Now, I know at the beginning of the show, I said, do I look? Yeah, yeah, of course I look somebody up, um, up on, on uh, LinkedIn, right? Because I wanna see what this person has been in the past, how active they are on LinkedIn. Um, you know, it, it's, that's what it's there for. But your other stuff, your personal, personal stuff, keep that locked down or sanitized because that's some it. people will dip into it that's it just just make it all private make it all right? private yeah. because even if you what you, you don't give don't give anyone that you know the opportunity to yep. hold something against you um it, what do you think about the the concern I, I i can't remember the exact circumstances i don't remember if it was a blog article i wrote or just something i put on linkedin a couple of years ago about this topic and, mm -hmm. and making similar recommendations to what we're talking about now. And someone said that, you know, recruiters shouldn't do that. You know, that's, that's you know, potential for discrimination. And my thought there was, you know, is what it remains. Well, if someone's going to discriminate they're they'll have their opportunity to do that. You know, when you show when, up. Eventually. <laughs> yeah. Right? So I never understood uh, that neither. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a, it, you know, I, People are going to do bad things. They're going to do bad things, yeah. whether they, yeah. it's in the dark or in the light, or, or you know, they'll, they'll eventually come out. Um, so I don't see that as a as a as a is even a, a a consideration in this. Do you? Now, okay. So I'm going to separate my answer. Is there a potential for discrimination? Of course there is. There's a potential anytime you meet somebody in person for discrimination, whether you do it or not. Something different, right? Right. Um, now, it, it's the second part to that is, is that I don't, again, I don't see that as any different than you coming into the interview, having a car and me meeting you in person. Right. This same argument came up about a couple of years ago when I forgot the name of the organization. It's at the back of my mind that they proposed the idea of video interviews. And a lot of people came out. I got some attorney friends of mine. Like, Ugh, that's going to create an issue. Again, what is the difference between me seeing a video of somebody, which I can see their personality, how they sell, especially if I'm looking for a sales position, I want to see how they do. Right. How is that any different than them sitting right across from you in person? So to me, it's, it's no difference. The possibility is only there. Just make sure whatever decision you make is based on their skill set and skill set alone. It's the same thing. Yeah, I'm with you. So, but hold on. Their skill set alone? Well, okay, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. Skill set should be a part of it, right? Because on a resume, you can see that this person is spot on. They got all of the uh, of, of the criteria that you're looking for. But then they're coming and they're complete, you know what, to uh, to uh, to uh, people. I almost said it. I forgot. This is the LinkedIn of podcasts. <laughs> Sorry about it. We don't check the explicit word. box. On no, we, yeah, we, we, we don't check it, right? My other podcast I do, but not this one. Um, no, yeah, so... Now, obviously, I want to this person to meet my team. I want this person to meet everybody he or she is going to be working with because I care about chemistry because it, and now some people disagree with that. Some people say, yes, let's so that's right. I'm correcting myself. That's right. Yes. Um, they focus just on the uh, skill set. But what's it going to do to your team if this person has a skill set that you need? Your team is running great. This person comes in and they have a toxic personality. 
Well, obviously that's not written in an interview, <laughs> right? But I'm gonna say no to that person. So yes, yeah, skill set is part of it. The chemistry is another part of it, but the chemistry, you gotta make sure that whatever decision you make, it's gotta be tied to that, right? Because you don't want them to come back and say, well, I'm the best person for this job. Tell me a reason why I wasn't hired. And don't tell me it's because I'm Hispanic or I'm a woman or I'm this or that. So then you have to answer that, right? Well, okay, so we have to caveat, I think, that any any protected class, any, you know, when we're talking about you know, gender or age yeah. or, or race or religion, it, it goes without saying, so we sh here we are saying it, it should go without <laughs> saying that that discriminating against someone, you know, for, for you know, based on any of those things is is awful. It's illegal. It shouldn't yep. happen. Right. Okay. However, there's a whole long list of other reasons to like or dislike someone as a potential employee, yep. and there's this movement that's going on right now about you know, AI recruiting and and removing bias from recruiting, and that's an interesting word to me because. Although the English language seems to be a change, evolving rapidly <laughs> and meanings of words changes, bias in and of itself isn't inherently bad. It's often bad and it's associated with a negative thing, but I am biased against unenergetic people and I do not apologize for that. There's nothing wrong with I'm that. I'm biased in our, in our hiring for salespeople against those who lack ambition. Um, if, if someone wants to use a different word for it, they can, but by definition, that's bias. Yep. And I don't apologize for it because I want ambitious, energetic people in our, in a, in our sales and recruiting roles, because I believe that's, those are important traits in order to be successful. So it's a strange thing to me as a professional recruiter to try to eliminate all of those things, because if I, if if I if I only consider who you are on paper, I'm not considering who you are at all. I, I'm just yeah. <laughs> considering what you've done, and whether it's team fit or ability or potential to exceed in a particular role. We have to get to know someone at, right. at, an, at a more intimate level, and so to bring this back to social accounts, I'll get a pretty good feel for who you are if you're very active yeah. on on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, you may be someone different in person. We all, you know, there, there's certainly uh, the opportunity to have a public persona on social media that that's made, you know, intended for fun or, um, just to, to, um, create, you know, attention. Yep. And so that may not be exactly who you are, but, um, it's worth looking at to get a feel for, I think so. for, for someone. And, um, we have to just acknowledge at some level that it's it's whether I see it then or I see it the day you walk in to meet me for the first time or, or on Zoom. Yeah, it's all it's all going to come out anyway. So I may as well <laughs> cut to the chase as a recruiter. And by the way, it happens that that's the message that as much as anything else we want to deliver today. Make no mistake. I'll look right in the, the camera. I won't look at you, Ricky. <laughs> Recruiters are looking at your social accounts. They are judging you. They're making decisions on whether to move forward with you as a candidate. So proceed accordingly. That's really the only message we want to give. Companies have the you know, those decisions to make. Individuals have those decisions to make. But just know that consequences, uh, there's consequences to your actions. That's all. And I think with that, Pete, we should go ahead and end it because that it, 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 it's I could have said that better myself. I'm going to throw some applause in there. I know. I know you said that's <laughs> Thank a crowd you. in the studio. That's you a crowd. Do that. Dude, they're all paid, um, you know, because because you said you are biased against people who are not energetic and you're not going to apologize for it. I understand it. My last name is bias. I'm not going to apologize for that. Neither there, Pete. So I'm with you 100 <laughs> percent. No, right. but. <laughs> I'm with right. you as for any, well. For anyone who, 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 who gets upset about that, I was spelling it as B A E Z. So there, <laughs> fine. That's, Thanks. Let's do that. <laughs> no, but look, I'm with you a thousand percent. It's uh, for everybody out there. Recruiters are looking. Don't don't give anybody any any type of ammunition to not give you the outcome that you're looking for. Should they make a decision f um, uh, based on social media or not? That's up to for the law to decide on how they do it, but don't rely on that. Just make sure that you've got everything locked away the way you should 
to, to what you should and include a social media cleansing protocol whenever you start preparing to go out there and be a candidate for different jobs. That is the best thing we can tell you today. Um, yep. yep. And I think uh, we should close it with that, Pete, until the, uh, the, the next time, right? Absolutely. This awesome. It's been fun. It Thank has. You, Ricky. Thank you, sir. So if you want to reach us, hire calling at uh, fourcornerresources.com. Let us know what kind of questions you are looking to, uh, to, to have Pete and I answer. Um, so those are coming in like crazy. Keep them coming in. We might just uh, um, Q &A ask a next question week. on the air. I think Q&A next. I think yes, we do. We're we doing have some it. questions piling up. All right, excellent. Folks, thank you very much for your time. You have a great one. Drive safe and good night. Thank you. Thank you.